kill. Each day, we were discovering different things in our box of surprises. Today, we are going to ask our last participant to come forward and we will discover what there is. Can you please come forward? And show it to the crowd. Very well, it is a dirty, dirty glove. And the other one is a clean glove. This reminds me of the verse of the week. The verse of the week is Psalms 24, verses 3 to 4. Okay. Psalms 24 verses 3 to 4. We will read it together. And it says, Who may ascend into the will of the Lord? Or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to a child, nor sworn to see The TPR version that I have says, Who may climb the mountain of the Lord and enter where he lives? Who may stand before the Lord? Only those with pure hands and hearts who do not practice dishonesty and lie. The Holy Bible is a very valuable treasure and is full of big and valuable lessons for our lives. During this week, it has taught us to stretch out our hands like our heroes in the past. Like the man with the shriveled time who taught us perseverance in his life in spite of living in a society filled with prejudice and ungratefulness. How by persevering in faith, Jesus sealed him. We also saw Moses who acquired confidence in God by stretching out his hand and it came on his chest of his secret leprosy. And so when he received the order from God again to stretch it out and his hand was sealed. And so can we forget the lesson of respect that was taught by Peter, who not being able to handle the mistreatment his master was receiving, he stretched out his hand, takes out the sword and cuts off the ear of Malchus. But Jesus stretched out his hand and put it back on the priest's servant. And what can be said about the value that is so needed in our days, which is loyalty, that was shown by Queen Esther, when she had the commitment of saving her people. All by God manifested himself in King Xerxes when he stretched out his hand with the scepter and gave Esther half of his kingdom. And, what, and how can we forget the father of faith, Abraham, when he showed us self-control by trusting in God at that moment when he stretched out his hand to sacrifice his only beloved son, Isaac. And what can be said about the good Samaritan who taught his true compassion and kindness when he stretched out his hand and helped a stranger? Today, we will learn to stretch out our hand with faith and purity that are needed qualities to obtain eternal life. I invite you to open your Bibles to the book of Exodus chapter 13 and 14. Exodus 13. Verse 14, Exodus 13, 14. And today can keep this screen fast. Eh? And it says, So it shall be oh, when your yeah. son asks you in that meeting. Oh, your mommy can go up with it in that school, why is it? You ask your mommy? With golden loins, their sandals on and staff in hand, the people of Israel, totaling about 600,000 men, without taking children into account, left Egypt and took with them a precious legacy, the bones of Joseph. When the people of Israel left Egypt, they had a very limited knowledge of God and very little faith in Him. That is why God led them through the root of the Red Sea and prevented them from going through the Philistine cities. With this, the Lord reveals to us that He is a very compassionate God and that He understands our circumstances. 
Exodus chapter 13, verses 21 to 22. It confirms the wonderful care that God had over his people. It says that during the day, the Lord went before them in a pillar of cloud to show them the way, and at night, he lighted the way with a pillar of fire. That way, they could travel day and night. The pillar of cloud never stopped guiding the people. Then the Lord told Moses to deviate towards the rocky cliff to camp alongside the Red Sea. At that same moment, he revealed to Moses that the Pharaoh was going to chase them, but God would be honored for their deliverance. Exodus chapter 14, verses 5 to 7 says, When the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, Pharaoh and his officials changed their minds about them and said, What have we done? We have let the Israelites go and have lost their services? Nonsense! So he had his chariot made ready and took his army with them. He took 600 of the best chariots. The Israelites were camping on the seashore in Jordan the West when suddenly a messenger arrives. Look over at the horizon! Can you see them? The Egyptians are coming! They are in the, in, they are in the desert. They could hear the powerful uproar of the, of the army. The Israelites were very afraid when they realized that Pharaoh's army was right behind them. Then they quarreled with Moses and said, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us out to the desert to die? Moses was greatly troubled to see that his people showed such little faith in God, although they had repeatedly witnessed the manifestation of his power in their favor. Exodus chapter 14 verses 21 to 22 says, Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and all that night the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land. The waters were divided, and the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground, with a wall of water on their right and on their left. Then the God made the wheels of the Egyptian chariots to get stuck so that it made it difficult for them to advance. Then they cried, <laughs> Let's get away from the Israelites. The Lord is fighting for them. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea so that the waters may flow back over the Egyptians and the chariots and horsemen. At that moment, Moses stood by the shore and stretched out his hand over the sea once again with the staff in his hand and he touched the water. The waters went back into their place. In an instant, the soul of the Egyptian army could no longer be heard. The horses, soldiers, chariots and horsemen, everything was drowned under the water. On that day, the Lord saved Israel and the people feared the Lord and believed in him and his servant Moses. In Isaiah 11 verse 11, there is a beautiful promise that says, In that day, the Lord will reach out his hand a second time to reclaim the surviving remnants of his people. Do you consider yourself a part of God's people? Then the Lord will come for you and for me. But for this precious meeting to take place, we have to fulfill a requirement. And we find it in Psalms 24 verses 3 to 4. This clean hand says, Only the one who has a clean hand and a pure heart may stand in his holy presence. Maybe you're asking, how can I achieve this if I'm a hopeless sinner? I imagine that our Heavenly Father will never ask us of something impossible to do. Every day he gives us a valuable gift, and I am going to represent it with this fish bowl. This wonderful gift is called grace. And grace is a sign of God's endless love for his children. These beats, these type of tokens, how many are there? Are not right? In Hebrews 8 verse 12 it says, For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. The Lord will tire from forgiving us every day. What he most wants is for us to keep our hands clean and to have a pure heart in order to meet it. Nowadays, lots of children live to mental thinking that they are too bad and that God would never stretch out his sight and help them like he has in the past. But the Lord does not lie. And in Isaiah 11 verse 11, 
He has promised to stretch out his hand to reclaim all of us because we are his people. I invite you to wash your hands in God's endless grace. Remember that God dissolves our sins and that God's love is enough for all of us. Walk things are dirty in your hands and have not allowed you to stretch them all to faith and purity. Only you know. I invite you to come to the front as you lift up a sign of prayer. Take the styrofoam token that was given to you earlier as, as that it symbolizes your sins and you will see the endless ways of God's love and <laughs> Thank you. 